going to go through setting up a Zoom meeting. Uh, I will use these for meeting with students when we're using e-learning uh, or distance learning. And setting up a meeting within Zoom is uh, very easy. It's got a couple of little tips and tricks that I like to sh use with uh, these student groups. Uh, but if I go ahead and sign in here from the Zoom uh, website, I'm going to use my Google account when I log in. Uh, I think it works the best as far as uh, making sure everything's easy to get into. So click down here, sign in with Google down here at the bottom. And it brings me to my meetings dashboard. And these are meetings I've already previously set up. And these are really just so that after I've set up all of the different settings and things like that, uh, they're ready to start by just clicking start. Uh, doesn't mean that they automatically start at this time. Uh, they're just sort of pre-set up this way. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do before I go in and schedule a new meeting or a template for one, I'm going to click on settings. And one of the most important settings I think on here uh, when you're using this with students is this one right here called screen sharing. Now it's defaulted to all participants and that means everybody who's in the chat can share their screen with everybody else. I like to switch that to host only. That way me as the teacher has the option to show my screen if I need to demo something. Uh, and if I really need other students within the, the uh, meeting to show their screen, I can change that setting in the middle of my uh, actual meeting. So I've changed that one. I'm going to go ahead back up here to meetings. I'm just going to show you how I schedule a new meeting and what settings I have chosen uh, that I find work best with students. So uh, I'm just going to call this uh, my demo meeting. And these are really just uh, visual as far as students being able to read the descriptions, things like that. If you have a template that you've created, uh, so you've gone through these settings, I can just click on this one template I've used before and sort of presets all these uh, different settings for me. Uh, when I go through the time and date and the duration, that is just informational. It doesn't make it so that it appears uh, automatically. If this is going to be something I do every day, I can make that a reoccurring or once a week. The meeting ID, ID I usually just let that pop up automatically. Uh, generally, if I'm sharing this on a private uh, information like via email or on a Google Classroom, I don't require a password. It just sort of adds an extra step that I think is unnecessary. And then here you want to choose, do you want to have your video on or off? Do you want the participants to have theirs on or off? And this is when the, the meeting first starts. You can, of course, change these things in the middle of the meeting, but I like to leave those on. Uh, you can leave the audio on both. And down here, these meeting options, these five different options, um, let me explain them because I think they're important. The enable join before host. I don't actually want my students in the meeting before I'm there moderating it. So I leave that one checked off. Uh, I like to turn on mute participants. That way, if you have a class of 30 kids joining this all at once, all of their mics will be automatically muted at first. Otherwise, it can get real loud. Uh, the waiting room gives you a way to have uh, the students sort of be in a holding area and you can approve them uh, either one by one or approve the entire waiting room. Uh, I like to leave that off just so that they can join when they when they uh, click the link and it automatically goes there. And then I also like to record my meetings. Uh, that way I have uh, a, a video recording of the meeting that I can post later if I want to. And once I save this, going to go ahead and add that to my different meetings. Uh, and the thing that I like to pop uh, copy off of here is specifically the join URL. Now, if you click copy the invitation, you'll see it basically gives you a whole bunch of text with all that information uh, already typed out for you. Uh, but what I like to use just with the students is just the URL. I think it makes it uh, kind of a little bit easier to understand. So I'm going to highlight this whole URL. And I'm going to copy that. And that is what I'm going to email out to my students and post into my Google Classroom. And all they have to do is click on that, and it just starts running right away. All right. So down here at the bottom, you can see there's one additional little option here. It says Save as a Meeting Template. Shows you there at the beginning. If I like the way these settings work, I can go ahead and save this as a meeting template. Uh, if I wanted to start this meeting right this moment, obviously I would click there, but I'm going to go ahead and go back to my meetings dashboard and see my overall meetings. You can see these are all set up 
uh, ready to go. Now, the way I would send it out is I've got my Google Classroom here. You could send it out a couple of different ways, uh, depending on what your students are used to reading. Uh, if you want to do it right here on the stream, go in here. Uh, and I like to add the link and paste that in and give a little information here. You know, click the link. Uh, to join between 9 and 10 or something like that, depending on when you plan to, to hold your session. So I'm going to go ahead and post that out to my students. They have that option. The other way I've done it is I actually will put it in my classwork and put it as an assignment. Uh, again, being sure to tell them within my assignment what time exactly I'm planning to be on the Zoom. Uh, because the way this works is you as the host start the Zoom meeting and nobody else can get into the meeting until you've started it because we chose that setting uh, that did not allow the uh, participants to join early. Once I have my meeting set up here, I'm going to go ahead and start it. Uh, so you can see what that looks like as a student uh, or as students join your class. So when I click start over on the right side, I have my demo meeting here. I click this dialog box to allow the app to go ahead and open up. And this should start the meeting right away. It'll, I have my video camera turned on, so it's going to turn that on right away here. Uh, when it asks me if I want to join with computer audio, go ahead and click on that. And as I have additional students join, and these are just my other computers set up as sort of pseudo students, uh, you'll see them appearing. Here's another one that just joined. And this will allow me to show you what this looks like. Um, let's say I just had a classroom of two additional students. So. Uh, speaker view up here in the top right will make it so that when a student is talking, it will appear as your large main image here. These two students have the cameras turned off, but if they had their camera turned on, you'd be able to see that. You can control your audio over here. Uh, you can mute yourself uh, as well as you can turn on and off your video. Uh, if you have yourself logged in under Google, it'll be the video or just the icon from your account. But I think the most useful down here is manage participants. When I click on manage participants, uh, it'll give me this little dashboard on the right side. It shows me who has muted their own microphones and who has turned off their own uh, video. But what this allows me to also do is mute everybody at once or unmute everybody uh, on my end so I can force them to be muted. So. Uh, I can make it so that they can unmute themselves or this just permanently mutes your entire class. Uh, I also have the ability, if I'm a student, uh, down here at the bottom I have these tools, but students have one additional tool uh, that is in the same place. So sometimes you have to ask them to click on this participants uh, button at the bottom so they can see it. I'm going to have one of my other students here raised his hand you can see john kelsey number three here raised his hand and that's how you could unmute them so that they would have the ability to speak to the class so it's a little little way for you to be able to get that uh, turn off that mute so i don't have myself twice here uh to have a little control within the classroom uh, you also have the ability down here to open up a chat window so students whose microphones aren't working are able to show up oh, here i have another uh, student joining here but i've had this uh chat room uh works nice for students whose microphones aren't working they can share with us we can all read and respond over there as well uh, and then one additional thing here where you are under share if i click on this share button i have the ability to share my entire screen with all of the students in here now remember here at the beginning uh when my settings i had that turned off for students so they cannot do the same back to me uh, I do also have a cool whiteboard option here where I can share a whiteboard that I can draw on uh, and a couple other different things here. So I'm going to go ahead and not share there. And the final thing you want to do at the end of your meeting is make sure you actually click on end meeting and you want to end that meeting for all your participants. So click on end meeting for all and that will push everybody out of your meeting session uh, so that there's no unmoderated uh, conversation going on behind. Um, after your meeting has ended. So hopefully this gives you a good overview of how to set up, run, and host a Zoom meeting with your students. Good luck and have fun.